Welcome back, everybody. All right, today we're going to be talking about division of polynomials. I'm going to kind of show you some old school thing, and then I'm going to bring it into the new age. I've always loved new stuff, new technology, the newest phone, the newest electronics, all that stuff. One day, this was all very new to me. Back in the day, this was my PlayStation 5 or whatever, PlayStation, you know, this was my Xbox. This was called Atari, the best thing ever. Just one button, one joystick. It was amazing. We had compact disc players, and you couldn't listen to them without them skipping. We had cassette tapes. Oh, this was so cool. All right, boom boxes, rotary phones. All these things were, at one point, really cool and new, but this is kind of old school. So let's start by showing you some old school long division, just to remind you of how things work, all right? So old school long division. 2,928 goes inside and 24 goes outside. 24 doesn't go into 2, but 24 goes into 29 once. So I multiply 1 times 24 is 24. Subtract, that's 5. Bring down the 2. How many times is 24 going to 52? I can do that twice. 2 times 24 is 48. 52 minus 48 is 4. Bring down the 8. 24, how many times is 24 going to 48? Twice, 48, and we have a remainder of zero. So that means 24 times 122 equals 2,928. That's old school. Great stuff, right? And to be completely honest, we can actually divide polynomials the same way. We can do long division of polynomials, but like I just told you, I love new stuff. So we're going to do something called synthetic division. All right. Maybe you learned how to divide before with long division, but we're going to do synthetic division. Synthetic division is new. I like it a lot better. I think it's a lot easier. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure I have every degree of my polynomial. I have a third, second, first, and this is like x to the zero, right? So I'm going to write down just the coefficients. Two, I'm going to give myself some space, 14, 27 and 9. If one of these was missing, I would put a 0 there. All right. Now, on the side, I'm going to figure out what number I need to divide by. So I have to solve this, and that's negative 3. So over here, I'm going to put negative 3. Very easy. I'm going to add down. So this is a column. There's nothing there. 2 plus nothing is 2. Then I'm going to multiply up. So negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Add down. 14 plus negative 6 is 8. Multiply up. Negative 3 times 8 is negative 24. Add down. 27 plus negative 24 is 3. Multiply up. Negative 9 add down zero so now how do i make this look like an actual polynomial you might say well let's take a look i had a third degree and i took one degree away so my first thing is going to be one degree less so that's going to be 2x squared plus 8x plus 3 and again here's my remainder this last one's my remainder in this case i have a remainder of zero so that divides evenly into that right there, okay? So this is called synthetic division. All right, welcome back. Blast from the past, DVD, uh, this is not even a DVD, this is a VHS tape. That's how I used to watch all my movies. You had to rewind them and everything, it was crazy. All right, so first thing I notice over here, I have an x to the third, I have x to the first, I have zero x squareds. I need to make sure I know that because when I put it in my box, I put my coefficients here, I need to have that zero. It's like a place value. Negative 17, 30. What am I going to divide by? It's a set it equal to 0 and solve that. So I'm going to divide by negative 3. All right, here we go. I add straight down. There's nothing here, so the first one's 3. Multiply. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Add straight down. Multiply. Negative 3 times negative 9 is a positive 27. Add straight down. Negative 3 times 10 is negative 30. Add straight down. All right, so my final, I had a third power. I took one power away. That's 3x squared minus 9x plus 
10. All right. All right, let's try another one over here. What is the long one? All right. Four, three, two, one. All right, I got everything. That's good. That's the good news. So here we go. One, because it's not written. Nine, 10, negative 41, and negative 7. All right, and it sets this equal to 0, so I'm going to divide by negative 4. So I go down, I have 1. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. 9 plus negative 4 is 5. Multiply negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. And 10 and negative 20 is negative 10. Multiply negative 4 times negative 10 is a positive 40, right? And then add down, that gives me negative 1. Negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4, and I have negative 3 at the end. All right, so I start with the fourth power. I took 1 away, so this is going to be 1x to the third plus 5x squared minus 10x minus 1. Oh, I'm out of things. This is actually going to be my remainder. So my remainder is negative 3. Now I can write it like that, or I can write it like this. All that's the same. Or I could write it like this, plus my remainder of 3 over what I divided by, x plus 4. All right, to be honest, I really like the first way. All right, the reason is it's just less writing, but it doesn't matter. You can write them either way. Now, this is a good question down here. Which of these divisors, x plus 3 or x plus 4, is actually a factor, and how do we know that? Well, a factor is something that divides in evenly. So which one, three or four, divides in evenly? Well, dividing in evenly means we have no remainder, correct? So no remainder means this one. So x plus three would actually be a factor of this. Ooh, that's awesome because now that we know we have a factor of one, we could actually, you know, factor what's left, right? We could probably do that. All right, let's see if we can do some of that. All right, number five is n plus 2, a factor of this. Ooh, the big polynomial. First of all, let's talk about it. How will we know if, there, if it's a factor? Well, if we divide this polynomial by this binomial, we should have no remainder, or remainder of 0. Let's try it. So, leading coefficient 1, 2. Oh, I have 0 n squareds. Ah, that's very important. 5 and 10. And I'm going to divide by, set that equal to 0, negative 2. So I'm going to add down 1, multiply up, 2 and negative 2 is 0. Ooh, you get into zeros here, it can get crazy. So 5 plus 0 is 5, negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. And hey, my remainder is 0. Remember, my last thing is going to be 0. So this would be n to the third, n squared, n, no n. That would be my remainder. Since my remainder is 0, that means it's a factor. It goes in perfectly even. Well done. Great job. All right. Let's go to the next one, number six. Before we do, run DMC. Very old school. Still love them today. Some things are great in the past and still work today. Long division was great in the past, still works today. Okay, I'm lying. Long division was never great, but run DMC, great. All right. Number six. So it's telling us right off the bat that this is a factor. So when I divide, it should have a remainder of 0. So let's see. 3, 1, negative 3, and negative 1. And I'm going to divide by 1. Now it wants me to factor completely, so I'm going to have to do something at the end. But let's see what we got. So I add down, multiply, add down, multiply, add down, multiply, Add down so it does it does go in evenly so this is now 3x squared plus 4x plus 1 all right now it says factor completely so we need to factor this now as you recall whenever the coefficient is the leading coefficient is greater than 1 it's best to do the box so I'm going to put first term in the first box last term in the last box all right I need two numbers that multiply to 3 and add to 4, well, not many choices. 3 times 1 add, multiplies to 3 and adds to 4. I keep my x's, so going this way, I can take a common factor of 1 out. Here, I can take a common factor of 3x out. Going up, I can just take an x out. And here, I can't really take anything out but a 1. 
So my factors are 3x plus 1, x plus 1, all right? Now it said factor this completely. So I have two factors of this, but my third factor would have to be what I gave you, x minus 1. So now I have all three of my factors. That's a trick. All right, when it says factor completely, they give you one of the factors. Make sure you include it in your answer, though. All right, all right, I think you guys are ready. I want you to try these on your own, see how it goes. All right, all right, over here, I put my coefficients down, I add it down and multiply it up. I got a remainder of eight, so I wrote it as my favorite way is just writing R8, but of course, you could write 7x squared plus 5x minus 9 plus. 8 over what I divided by originally, x minus 3 or v minus 3. All right, number 2. It says this is definitely a factor. I divided it by negative 2 because it was x, x plus 2 equals 0, and I found it did, it was a factor. So I had 3x squared minus x minus 10 left. I factored that polynomial with my box. I got 3x plus 5 and x minus 2, but don't forget, x plus 2 is one of the answers as well. If I have a degree 3, I should have 3. 1, 2, 3. 3x three is in there, and I sure do. All right. Hey, don't forget, guys, your teacher, valuable, just valuable resource. Use them. Ask them. Don't be satisfied if you don't know something. So when you ask your teacher for help, and they help you, and they walk away, and you're like, oh, man, I still don't get it, like, ask them again. Like, keep asking for help. Ask the, the kid next to you. The girl, the boy next to you, there's a lot of people out there who know how to do math. And they, they want to help you, all right? Um, go out there. This is totally, totally right up your alley. Every one of you can do this. I know you can. It might be hard, but it doesn't mean it can't happen. You can do this. Go out, do some great things today. Make us all proud. Till next time.